Hey, what's up, fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. So, still got a lot of people saying that we need to vote for Kamala Harris because she's a black woman. She'd be the first black woman, divine nine, to get in, become president of the United States. And a lot of us are trying to let, tell these people well, I heard somebody say, I can't remember her name, but she said, why is it that we have to go black when she didn't? Now, you know, I mean, when you want to bring race into it, let's just keep it a buck. Let's keep it 100, right? Shouldn't have to bring race into it. But when you bring race into it, now we're going to have to dive deep into this racial aspect. She married a white dude. Okay. Anything wrong with that? I mean, teach his own. You know what I'm saying? You do what you want to do, whatever makes you happy etc cetera, etc cetera. but she married a white man and had don't have kids of her own helping raise white children but yet <clears throat> everything has to be black 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 when it comes to us she not eat but think about it is i can't get upset really with her about that because she's not really verbally promoting black she's probably i mean she's trying to do it by her actions or lack thereof. But she's not really saying a whole lot about her blackness. She'll say woman of color. She'll say Indian. But we are the ones. Our people are the ones who promote and pushing this whole black agenda. But <clears throat> what's funny and what people don't really seem to realize is there was a time when she had a chance. The one time that she had a chance to promote her blackness. Which means... This is her father's side of her family. The one time she had, she could have said something positive about him. She said something derogatory, trying to be funny, but trying to be culturally appropriate. But let's get into that. This is from the independent.co.uk. And this reads, Kamala Harris says her dad taught her to be fearless, but he's been markedly absent from her public rise. Now, that may, you might think, hey, what does that got to do with what you're talking about? Allow me to continue to read, please. Family is, is at the forefront of Kamala Harris's presidential campaign, and she speaks frequently and fondly of her late mother's influence. But rarely is there mention of her father, a Marxist economist professor who left Jamaica for UC Berkeley. Donald J. Harris said, has said little about his daughter during her meteoric rise other than to scold her, writes Sheila Flynn. So now you're going to kind of make him look like the bad guy, but you know what? As men, we've already come to the conclusion that we are the least liked person in the family because we're the ones who have to lay the law down. We don't want to have to be, you know, say, tell you no when you need to hear no, and it makes us the the bad guy. But yet, we make sure everything is still running smooth no matter what. And what do we get? Should we barely get the big piece of chicken? We may get a tie. When it's time for gifts, people are scrambling, looking around, but they look with them sad puppy eyes while they couldn't get you nothing. But anyway, let's keep going. Kamala Harris was on her 2019 memoir, memoir promotion tour when she joked around with radio host Charlemagne the Job. I mean, Charlemagne the God, the future vice president, cheekily answering his question about whether she'd ever use marijuana. Now, we know, preface this. There are a lot of people out there who's talking bad about Kamala Harris and her time as attorney general. And what was she? Uh, what was she? Senate something? I forgot. God damn, I forgot. But anyway, over there in California, right? Because they say a lot of people. She put a lot of people in jail over simple marijuana charges. And now you know that the country, a lot of states are letting a lot of people out of those simple marijuana charges. Then Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, trying to sit there and say that they are. Uh, pardon a lot of people with these drug charges, but not telling you that everybody they pardon is already out of prison, that all the people that are still in prison hadn't been pardoned. So you always got to read when some, when you, when you see a headline, I always go and read the story. I would say, I would suggest don't even watch the news. I mean, you can watch it and get like a, the context, but then you go find the story in like a periodical, a local newspaper and 
they make sure it's like two pages. And if it is, you know, then it's, it's, it's a story worth reading because it has a lot of all the details that you need. So, again, one minute she was hard on marijuana. Now, all of a sudden, remember, she did a press conference with Fat Joe about, you know, limiting or lowering the, the penalties for like simple marijuana use, this, that, and the third. So, anyway, just wanted to preface that with this. Let me preface this with that. So, they said, uh, he asked her whether she'd ever use marijuana. This is what this heifer said. Half my family's from Jamaica, she said. Are you kidding me? Sniggle, sniggle, giggle, giggle. The man responsible for that half of the family, however, the politician's father, economist Donald J. Harris, wasn't laughing. Despite his virtual invisibility throughout Harris's political rise, her father chose that moment to raise his head above the parapet, which he should have. Like a man, like a real man, like a true father, when your child is doing something like a true parent should do, when your child is doing something to embarrass your name, you say something. You check them. If they want to check, if they want to embarrass you in public, then you then you chastise them in public. If they want to do it in private, you chastise them in private, but you make sure you get them straight. That's what a man is supposed to do. He said he sent a letter to a to a media outlet in his native Jamaica publicly scolding her like a naughty child. Well, she was. Quote, my dear departed grandmothers who Extraordinary, extraordinary legacy I described in a recent essay on this website, as well as, my, as well as my deceased parents, must be turning in their grave right now to see their family's name, reputation, and proud Jamaican identity being connected in any way, jokingly or not, with the fraudulent stereotype of a pot-smoking joy seeker and in the pursuit of identity politics, he wrote. Couldn't have said it better myself. She's on the Breakfast Club or wherever she was well, on the Breakfast Club, you know, being interviewed by Charlemagne the God. So now she's trying to pander to the quote hip hop culture. Isn't it sad that you're pan that you have to go to taking in an I mean, whether you think it should be legal or not, taking in an illegal substance in this country. A substance that will get you inebriated. That you feel that's how you have to pander to the hip hop community to try to get on their side. It's bad enough how you said you like to listen to Tupac when you was in college. That's a big viral story. It's bad enough that you said that you clean your greens in the bathtub. Like who in the hell would eat greens out of a bathtub? I mean, you said you cooked them in, clean them in the bathtub. Well, hell, where'd you cook them at? Outside in, a, in one of them, in outside in one of them big pots, like wash tubs. I mean, shoot, that's a because that's a lot of doggone green. But anyway, you all this stuff you do, and then you went to like a record store and bought records. And uh, everybody loves the sunshine song. You had that. Now I got records. I got a bunch of records over there now. I mean, but I collect them. I listen to them. That's what I do. You know, I said I've been doing it for years. So I'm always looking for records. Every time I think, of, uh, every time I. Hear a song, you know what I'm saying? Listen to a song like a song, like an album, like an artist. I'll see if it's on vinyl first before anything. Now, I get it digitally. Now, I like going through Amazon. I'm going all off topic. But like Amazon, if you can find the vinyl on Amazon, then it'll be automatically put on your Amazon account so where you can hear it digitally. So I like that. You know, but anyway, back to this story. But it's bad enough you pan it like that. But then the one time you could have did something positive for your black side of the family. And it probably would have went further than that little stupid little saying, that little stupid little quote you made. If you were told all the positive, no, told say something positive, all the, the positive and, the, and the, all the positive things that your father did in his life. But let's keep going. But yeah, so you trying to use identity politics like I said, you got all these sisters and these brothers and everybody else talking about vote for her because she's black. She's not um, part of the, 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 the nine, what is it, divine nine or whatever. And she went to HBCU. Who cares? Quote, speaking, let me keep saying, let me keep speaking on what this brother said, this, this, this black man said since Kamala Harris, representing Kamala Harris is black with her daddy black. Well, look what her black side of her family did and what he's saying. Speaking for myself and my immediate Jamaican family, we wish to 
categorically disassociate ourselves from this travesty. His daughter's representatives made no comment at the time, at least not publicly, and the professor again went silent. That's how dudes do. A lot of times, men don't say a whole lot, shouldn't say a whole lot. We, we just say what we got to say, we make a point, and then we move on because we shouldn't have to repeat ourselves too many times. You know, beat it in your head, beat a dead horse. What do they say? Beat a dead horse to death. What do they say? Beat, you just beating a dead horse? Yeah. Shouldn't have to do that. What I say is what I say. I should say it one time, one time only. If I got, if I got to repeat myself, it's going to be a problem. If I got to keep explaining myself, it's going to be a problem. Either understand it or you don't. It say, uh, I have, quote, I have, I have decided to stay out of all the political hullo hullabaloo by not engaging in any interviews with the media, he wrote in an email reviewed at the time by Politico. And it seems he stayed true to his word. There has been nary a peep from the 85-year-old Stanford Emeritus Emeritus professor as his daughter's White House campaign makes waves across America. They say the weed brouhaha, however, seems a nod to a long-term fraught relationship between the two. Even if the seeds for Harris's political aspirations can be clearly seen from the early days of a parent's university courtship. So I don't know why her mom and daddy broke up, got divorced or what have you, but she has to give that man credit. Has to give her credit to plant the seed to get to where she's at now. Now, how now how she got there, if it's scrupulous ways or not, I don't know, can't say, but she's there. But let's talk about, again, some of the positive things about her father. Donald broke the academic barriers a generation before his ceiling shatter, shattering daughter. Born in Jamaica in 1938 and raised in St. Anne Parish, he was what is that? He was descended on his father's side from planter and slave owning politician Hamilton Brown, founder of Brown's Town in the island. Uh oh, wait a minute. His dad. Uh oh, wait a minute. Well, that's not that's not the positive part that his father's father owned slaves. We, we don't want to say that's positive, but let's keep going. The academic has credited his grandmother's as his greatest early influences. His father's mother, Miss Chrissy. Born Christ Christiana Brown, owned a dry goods store on the main street of Brownstown and sparked my interest in economics and politics simply by my observing and listening to her in her daily routine, he wrote in 2018, including listening to her chats about politics with family and friends. I said myself that if I had a second career, it'd either be in like law or, or like accounting or, like, you know, or law or like, yeah, accounting or like taxes or something like that. Because I mean, I'm just very intrigued, especially when you watch these elections and you see that's basically what everything is based on. It should be based on color. Once you start looking into policy, then you can, then you need to start researching and studying about laws and economics. Cause America is a capitalist society, which makes me brings to the point. This, this is one reason why I feel not saying it has to be Donald Trump, but that's why I want, why I feel that whoever runs this country should ha have some kind of business experience, history, success. Because if America is a, is a capitalistic society, that means America runs on business, right? So you need somebody who knows how to run a business. Now, if America was what Marxist and what does they got? Communists and socialists and all that kind of stuff. Fine. Go pilot, go politicians. But America is not like that because America is so uh, uh, capitalistic. They screwed, well, we, we screwed up on politics. You don't know if you use a republic. You don't know if it's a democratic country. Don't know. You just say, you just use words interchangeably that probably don't even mean the same thing. But if we was using someone, if we had someone who was, you know, a business owner, somebody who can run, run, who has ran a large corporation successfully, made billions of dollars. I bet you that person can go in and make deals and make sure that the country is running smoothly, economically, keeping prices down, inflation down, taxes down, uh, 
all that. People would be able to make a li uh, livable wage and folks wouldn't be out here struggling the way that they are. I saw one article where they got some dilapidated apartment complexes like slums in Dallas. And I might cover that one of these days because I'm reading this book called Evicted, which is real good, man. But anyway, these people are paying like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars dollars for a one bedroom apartment. Ceilings coming in, mold, you know what I'm saying, in the walls and coming out the water. Holes all over, rats, roaches, all this kind of stuff. Pool got moss growing into it, algae and stuff growing into it. And it's fifteen hundred dollars for one bedroom. To where you got like Whole families sharing one bedroom, whole families, if not two families, sharing one bedroom, one bath, just to live, survive like it's a third or fourth world country. And that's not what America's supposed to be about, right? That's not the pictures they show. They need to show them pictures. You know how we see the, the uh, what is that, them Sally Struthers infomercials when they go to Africa and see all these little babies with uh, flies around their head and big, big, big stomachs and they ain't ate nothing and I don't know when. They need to do the same thing here. Or they show like these old Jewish women who are like 120 years old, survivors of the Holocaust somehow, and ain't got no money. They want us to send money to them, give them money so they can eat. It's like, what the heck? But they need to do that here in our hoods. Do to have them same freaking commercials and see and see who will give. But anyway. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh yeah, politics. In economics, that would be my second career. Donald spent summers on on a cane farm run by his maternal grandmother, Miss Iris, Iris Finnegan, which sparked an interest in the role sugar played in the country's economy, including its slave trade. "Quote: It was this early, intimate exposure to operation of the sugar industry at the local level of small scale production with family labor and free wage and free wage labor coupled with my growing curiosity about how these things came to be that led me once i started reading about the history of jamaica to a closer study of the sugar industry he wrote in jamaica global i came then to understand its origin as a system of global production and commerce based on slave labor which jamaica is a key component of that system from its very start so y'all need to be getting some y'all jamaica need to be getting some reparations but let me see. I want to get into his schooling. Here we go. He attended the University of the West Indies before graduating from the University of London and later earned a PhD from UK, UC, UC Berkeley. And it was at Berkeley there he met Kamala's mother, Shyamala Gopalan, who left her home in India as a teenager in 1958 to pursue a doctorate in nutrition and endocrinology. She fell in love with Donald, her first boyfriend, in, the, in that most American way while marching together for Justice in the Civil Rights Movement in the 60s. Harris, oh hell, Harris said, never mind. Harris said in the 2020 speech, active in the leftist circles, welcoming to black groups. They say Shai Amala was welcoming to black groups as a person of color who's grown up under the colonial system. <sighs> One day, everybody in every, in every country going to understand that we are pretty much the same in this in this system and we should stick together and work together to help each other unfortunately it seems like we do more of the helping and then once everybody else get a leg up they forget about our people that's why we just gotta do our own i do i do our due diligence to help ourselves first say she was part of real brotherhood and sisterhood never an issue never is um uh, it's another member, Ann Williams, called Donald Reserve, an academic in his presentation, while Shamala was warm and charming, according to the Times. There's no doubt about it. It was very much together, very much in love. They said they married and welcomed Kamala in 64, followed by her sisters. I'm trying to see. Uh, say so he wanted his daughters to know they can do anything, although he may not have, have expected the answer to be the President of the United States, yeah. He says lessons went beyond their personal aspirations and were meant to awaken a broader sense of social awkwardness and responsibility. He wrote, uh, he said, teach them the sky's the limit. Let's keep going. Her parents' marriage rapidly dissolving, however, and they separated when Harris was around five when her father took a job at the University of Wisconsin. The couple divorced several years later, and an economics professor worked at other Midwest universities before joining the faculty at Stanford. 
they said maybe if they was older, they might the marriage probably would have survived. My father remained a part of our lives. We would see him on weekends, spend summers with him in Palo Alto. It was really my mother who took charge of our upbringing. She was the one most responsible for shaping us to the women we became. I hope not because you're somebody that we can't trust because you're full of it. Like I said, you are, I don't know. But anyway, like I say, my point is the father played a major role and the mother too. You know I mean? They both did. What I'm saying is we don't want to minimize the father's roles. But like I said, the one time she was, she could have said, Hey, when Charlemagne, the God asked her about smoking marijuana, she was like, she could have easily said, no, I didn't, you know, I haven't smoked, um, never touched the stuff. And then maybe he would have said something about, you know, well, yo, I just wanted because, you know, your father's Jamaican. And he, then she could have said, nah, my father was this, that, and the third, and economist, you know, economist, I mean, went to, you know, went to three different universities around the world, came in America, was was like part of the civil rights movement, got, you know, professor at a couple of different universities. The man is an academic scholar. Can't say anything bad about my father, but no. That... She sat there and tried to demean her father in a joke. Thought it was funny. Thought it was culturally appropriate. And it just shows another clown act. But anyway, that's all I got. This is a pretty long article. Not really. Yeah, it's a little long. I don't need to read all this. I'll put the link in the description box. Read it for yourselves. So so you can say, let's see, oh, my minister decade, let's say, he said Donald began advising Jamaican officials by the late 80s and the early 1990s. Prime Minister May Harris, a senior economic advisor and the head of the country's National Industry Policy Board, according to the Post. Yeah, the Prime Minister told in your time she recalled reading his work far back in 65 and three years he got tenure. Think about it, a black man. And then he left and went to Stanford. He's a big thing for us. He pushed the boundaries. He was way ahead of his time. So see, the man got a lot of accomplishments. He need to get handcuffed play, praise for that. That's what she should. Just, that's what she should be doing. If you y'all want to play some identity politics? The black side of her family, Jamaican man, academic, econ, <clears throat> economist, grade A guy looked like. You know, I mean, born from you know from some slave owners. When you know we got, uh, that's not his fault. But it also shows that Kamala Harris came from something. Kamala Harris didn't have to wasn't, wasn't from the hood. She might have been born in, you know, in Oakland and stayed there for a few years and then moved to, then moved to Canada or what have you. But she ain't have it like that. You know what I'm saying? She had parents who was, was well to do. And it shows in the way she in her, you know, her her her, her uh political aspirations in her political career, I mean. So it is what it is. But anyway, tell me what you think about this story. Leave your comments below. Share it with the world. Let's dialogue. You know how we do around here. Hey, I want to thank y'all for watching. But don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Those four ways of support. Cost you nothing but maybe a couple minutes of your day, but it means the world to us. But if you do want to support financially, you can get a super thanks, super chats, or you can go to the description box. There are links there that you can click on and you can, you know what I'm saying, and contribute there financially. Also, don't forget to go to MarlonMorale.com get your beard products, your Colognes, perfume, silk products, uh, toilet hanger, toiletry, toiletry bags, and more. Just go on there, MarlinMorale.com. Everything is luxury, top, top quality. You won't be disappointed. With that being said, I leave you in peace, and I'll see you on the other side.